John Kernan is with Richard Childress. Richard Dale just went a lap down. Obviously, the car very, very loose. Is that the only problem? Yeah, we don't know if something's the matter in the rear end or what, but he said it just started jumping loose on him here a few laps ago. He said he can't even touch a gas on the straightaway right now. Well, they will try and tighten it up for the first chance you guys can get. I know you would love to have a caution to get a pit stop here. Yeah, we may just go ahead and hit him here. That's what we're talking about right now. Richard Childress there putting their heads together, talking things over with Andy Petrie and the rest of the crew. And we may see Dale Earnhardt come into the pits here shortly as a good wrench crew swings into action. Dale just got passed by the third place, Daryl Waltrip. Here is Earnhardt, 21st. He moved up to 12th at the end of 20 laps, 11th at 45, and then the slide back began. He moved to 15th, and he now is 20th, one lap down. Derek Cope's car, the Bojangles Ford, being pushed into the garage area and out of the race as Rusty Wallace goes by the Dale Earnhardt car. And Dick Trickle, who was involved in that first lap accident, is also back in the race. Earnhardt's coming in. Drops down to the inside, slams on the brakes, and turns left on the pit road. And Bobby Labonte is also on pit road. Here's John Kernan. It'll be a four-tire change for the Goodrich crew. Earnhardt comes in. They decided to go ahead and take care of it now. They're coming up on a regularly scheduled green flag stops for about 20 to 30 laps. The car just so loose, as you heard Richard Childress tell you, Dale could not drive it. Now the jack goes up through three pumps. They will tighten up the chassis with the left rear. A couple of rounds of wet. Tires are on. Dale Earnhardt's down and away. Just past the one-quarter mark. We're on lap 101. Earnhardt making his first pit stop to try to create a badly handling race car. He's now three laps down. There's the leader, Sterling Martin. And on the racetrack, some good battling. Elliott, Allison, Rudd. Well, Ricky Rudd was right behind Brett Bodine just a couple of laps ago, and Bill Elliott got on the inside of him. And you can see that Rudd's car just does not go well at all on the outside because he's lost by half a straightaway just in a few laps. 10th, 11th, and 12th there. In the middle is the number six car of Mark Martin, who was involved, of course, in that first lap incident, and that car is running well right now. And he really is running well. One thing that's helping, of course, he has much, much fresher tires than do the others, but as he said, he had an awfully good race car before this race started today, and uh, they probably put it back basically the way it was. Auto Light Field Summary. cars on the lead lap. Never see Earnhardt. He went by the leader with those fresh tires. He went by the leader and Bobby Labonte as well. You can see how much those fresh tires are worth. Coming. He moves over and lets Earnhardt go. Again, is 16th and will be the next car to go a lap down if Sterling doesn't pit between now and that time. Gasoline is not a problem with this speedway. Uh, they probably run 150 laps on the plane of fuel, but the tires just get to the point they can't grip the racetrack. All of them have the same problems. Right now, Sterling Marlin's car is the better of the, of the worst. So we're approaching that time when everybody will have to come in for some fresh rubber. How about it, John Kernan? Well, you're exactly right. I was talking with Eddie Wood of Wood Brothers, Morgan Shepherd's number 21 set go forward. He was telling me after 20 laps, they only lose about a tenth of a second. But after 20 laps on up, it can drop off as much as a second or more when you get about 60 to 70 laps on these Goodyear Eagles. And so they can, like Benny said, I talked with Barry Dodson, Darrell Walton, he said they can probably go 150, 155 laps. But because of the tires giving up, they see that importance of that with Dale Earnhardt out there. They've got a pit probably in about 20 laps but what Walter crew is looking for is for Sterling Harlan and when they come in and Daryl will also pit. Now let's go down the road to Jerry Price. And John here in the Sterling Marlins, but they're trying to decide when they pit. They know that when they pit, everyone else will have to pit. And 
to determining factor here is just what many parts have said. Not fuel mileage, and maybe not even tire wear so much as that stopwatch. Kenny Wilson, the crew chief, standing out on pit road with a stopwatch, clocking every successive lap as Sterling comes by. When those laps start to get slower and slower, Kenny will finally turn to make the determination, okay, now it's time to pit. Probably the next 15 laps. So we will await that as Marlin continues to lap slower traffic. Coming up on Rick Wilson at number 44. And that car on the left there is Harry Gant, and he is in 16th position. We're live at North Wilkesboro Speedway in North Carolina for the First Union 400. And we'll be back in just a moment. in North Wilkesboro where Sterling Marlin is about to lap the 16th place car of Harry Gant. Right now Sterling has a 3.779 second lead on Schrader, four and a half second lead on Waltrip, 6.76 second lead on Dale Jarrett, and about an eight second lead on Kyle Petty, who is fifth. Actually, Morgan Shepard is in uh, fifth right now, Bob, but Kyle Petty is coming up on them pretty, pretty quickly. Now we see Bobby Hill with those fresh tires. He made it about 10 laps ago. Just goes blowing right by Ricky Rudd and Brett Bodine. Now Rudd is trying to get by Brett Bodine. This is fourth position. 11th. Rick Wilson's made a pit stop for those, with those fresh tires. He's able to pass these cars with ease. But Earl Waltrip has moved around Kenny Schrader for second place. Hey, there's a little bit of metal on the Yeah, front. I thought it was a hot dog wrapper for a while, but no, it is metal. That's down in turn one, but that's up and out, out off the racing groove. It's going to be very difficult for the cars to get there to it. If they get up there, they're, they're in trouble. Aren't yeah, they? big trouble. They're sliding when they get there. Ricky Rudd in 11th position. There's the leader, Marlin. And there goes Darrell Walker by the start finish line. So about a half straightaway lead that uh, Sterling Marlin has. I better make that a straightaway, hadn't I? I think Darrell is gaining on him. I don't think there's any doubt about what Darrell Walter is gaining on him. Sterling Marlin. There he goes. This is a field snapshot. Now watch for your favorite driver to come down. You can see how far he is behind the leader. And then got to turn the clock over. It's for time in the lap. I'm sorry. Right. right. Sorry. You remember they qualified at uh, 19.22. So let's see how fast they're running at this point of the race. 19.22. 21.2. So they've lost two seconds. The pole sitter, Brett Bodine, is in the pits. He's the only driver eligible for $7,600 in Unical bonus money. Here's Jerry. And I'm told this is a scheduled pit stop. They were getting slower and slower, so their stopwatch said, hey, we have got to come down pit road and get fresh tires. Both the right side tires haven't gone on. The Quaker stayed forward, and the pole sitting car now has left side tires. Cleaning the windshield with the cover to debris. You get ready to drop the jack, and he spins away 20.7. Yeah, just a little less than 21 seconds, and Brett Bodine is out on the racetrack once again. And that's a slow pit stop. Yeah, it is. Eight standard seven yeah. slow pit stop, and a year ago we'd call that fantastic. Yeah. Here comes Phil Parsons coming in the pits just out on the right side of our screen. In the Manhattan auto auction car. And there is the Alcoa racing car being driven by Jimmy Hensley almost a lap down to Sterling Marlin. Here's Phil making a chassis adjustment on the left rear. Uh oh, the rear tire. They got out of the jack back around the rear tire. Morgan Shepard might have a flat tire. He just went very high in turn two. He doesn't sit and go forward back down. bringing the, the jack back around. Yeah. The right rear, when it was not seated apparently, and not only did it cause that problem, but it also uh, caused some damage there on the sheet metal above the tire. Still now out after him again. Well, that's too bad. It cost him a lot of extra time there. As Derek Cope comes back out into Bojangles forward, he had gone behind the garage, into the garage for a while. Morgan Shepard, I mentioned, went very high. He lost about three positions, but he's still out there running. Marlin now coming up on Jimmy Hensley. Here is uh, Schrader and Jarrett. This is the battle for position for third. 
Darrell Walter is second, and 